back to the channel and today a review of James Cavell's Shogun. So let me pull up my copy here. The Elephant in the Room, this is quite a large book so it may look intimidating. Uh, historical fiction of 1300 pages. Um, everyone that sees it thinks wow I can't believe you're reading a book that big. Apart from people like us on booktube obviously we you know it's not so bad for us um, but I am a slow reader and this was a little daunting at first though I'm, I'm happy to say this is a real page turner. I found it really hard to put this book down at times. Um, the level of characterization and political intrigue in here is exactly how I like it. I love historical fiction and this is very, very well done. Now, um, what's, what's Shogun about? So it's 1600, we're in Japan, but we are uh, in, the, in the boots of an English pilot of a Dutch uh, vessel that has basically ended up stranded by a storm on the coast of Japan. And this is really about the acclimatization, or at least initially the acclimatization of one Englishman to the strange land of Japan. Quickly, this um, book takes a complete divergence. You will actually be thrust into the minds of several characters, several points of view, um, and you really get to see events from um, a Japanese um, perspective and a kind of European perspective. Now, the events of this book follow hotly on from a very interesting period in Japanese history. So during this period, uh, we've just come away from a, a real era of upheaval um, where once again, the emperor has been sent back to Osaka and um, lots of different daimos are fighting for power. There's been a kind of peasant uprising. There was a war in Korea and it's really, it is a power vacuum. And this is all of the events leading up to what again becomes the shogunate that would run all the way up until Imperial um, Japan's uh, enter into the Great Wars. So we follow a character from that perspective or called Toriyama. Now that's not his uh, real name. All of the people in this, almost 70-80% of the characters in this have been renamed but they are reasonably historically accurate to the events of the time. Now it takes part mostly between Osaka and the um, the kind of islands of Izu or the Odawa region. So it will take place through here um, and it will encompass several characters, mostly tied to the events of the old um, Lord's um, assassination that happens before this book. Now, 50 years before this book, the Jesuits had come from Portugal and they are now kind of in charge of the silk trade. Um, China and Japan have been at war previously, so they don't want to trade with each other, but Japan desperately needs the silk from China. And it is possible for the black ship, which is the, the Portuguese uh, trading ship, to charge basically a thousand percent inflation on all the silk um, transported between China and Japan, because obviously they won't trade with each other. Now, this is a key um, political point in the book and something that um, people wrestle with. And it is why our main character becomes quite important to everyone um, that is kind of involved in this power vacuum. Um, now, you should be really coming to terms with three characters here. That's Blackthorn, our initial point of contact. Um, Mariko, who is um, someone that becomes very close to him, someone that helps him translate. And Toronaga, who is kind of our... Um, he gives us our political intrigue. He gives us our look into what the actual... Um, the upcoming power fight is all about um, but really it's the extended characters of this book that really hit home people like Yabu, um, Naga, um, you've got Buntaro and Gyoko whose character is fantastic she's basically a madam that wants to kickstart um, the geisha kind of class um, of people in Japan and these characters they are so multi-layered um, this book doesn't focus on um, traditional themes. It doesn't really focus on um, having really um, high quality prose even. It is it's all about the characters and viewing all of the events through two very distinctly different lenses. Now, you will see events and you will read events in this book that are horrifying. And, you know, you can't think of a way to justify them. But as you see these events through different lenses, you almost start to justify some of these of the more evil characters, some of the more evil events in this. 
and you start to see it from a different point of view and you get to see characters view them gradually over time from through two different lenses as they are exposed to each other they are also exposed to each other's worlds and their own um, interpretations of events and that is really where this book shines this is an early uh, book of the year contender for me and i would actually give this book a 4.8 out of 5.